All right, we're going to jump into uh, the message for today. I want to open up with a word of prayer. <sighs> Heavenly Father, God, thank you so much for this morning. Uh, thank you so much for dialing down the heat, however you've done it. I don't know if it's the clouds or whatever. Um, thank you so much that it's, it feels a bit more bearable. Uh, and we, we appreciate every grace and mercy you throw our way, Father. We ask that your spirit will be present with us today. God, as we talk about your kingdom, God, we pray that uh, we will have ears to hear and eyes to see what you are doing amongst us and what you want us to learn. We love you. It's in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. So we have been talking about the gospel, but we've made a huge pit stop at the kingdom. And that has been a great pit stop for me. I know I shared some of this with the men yesterday. It has forced me uh, to really think about my convictions and my practices over the year, over the years, as it pertains to what I believe the gospel is, what I believe the kingdom is, how do I live these things out? Um, and so one of the things that I feel like God has put on my heart that I've been sharing with our house church, and I'm going to share a, a bunch of it with you today, is how the king reigns in our lives. How the king reigns in our lives. For us, of course, that's King Jesus. How do we allow King Jesus to reign in our lives? By a show of hands, is it safe to say that God wants to communicate with his very good kingdom people. All right. So we agree that God wants to communicate with his people. Right. And if we look at God, Jesus, King, there are several ways a king delivers messages. And one of the titles that is used for the messenger, messenger is one, is herald. Have you ever heard of that term, herald? Right? We sing it, hark the heralding. Right? We sing that in Christmas. In the Old Testament, God uses several different kind of heralds to deliver his messages. He uses angels. He uses prophets or seers. He uses judges. Some people may say they're still prophets. And um, I'm sorry, I feel like I'm missing one. <laughs> Somebody said a donkey. He did. He did. He did. Uh, and sometimes he would use a king, right? Sometimes he would use a king. In the New Testament, God adds to this list of heralds. He adds about four to this list of heralds. Can you, can you think who those four are? Son, the Son, Jesus Christ. Yes. The, okay, you, you're going through all of them, all right? Get some people. The apostles, the ones that Jesus chose. So we have Jesus, his 12 chosen ones. Who else? That's two. Say that again. His holy nation. Say more about that, because the holy nation existed before the New Testament. Chosen people. I'll give you that. What I, what I, what I was going to go with. It's still the chosen people, but I would say the, the church, right? The, the people filled with, number four, the Holy Spirit, right? So those are the four new heralds in the New Testament. Not to say that God himself don't communicate. Not to say that angels don't still communicate. Not to say that prophets don't still communicate because they're all in the New Testament. But the, the, the addition is those four. Jesus is... Uh, watching down. He's no longer here on earth with us. The apostles are part of the cloud of witnesses, I believe, or, you know, the elderly throne. They got their roles. They're no longer here. So I want to talk about the two that are. I want to talk about the two heralds that are here that are, you, are tools to communicate God's message and will to us. And that is the disciples or the church and the Holy Spirit. The disciples or the church and the Holy Spirit, because in order for the king 
to reign in our lives, we have to be able to, to submit to his orders. But those orders come from somewhere. Yes, we have the Bible. That is true. And we follow the Bible to the best of our ability. There's things in it that we no longer practice. There's things in it that we still practice. But as we all know, not everything in the Bible speaks to what you need to be taking care of today. Not everything in the Bible speaks to not everything that you need to be taking care of today. You got to think, even in the New Testament, there were new things that, that the Holy Spirit and Jesus had to speak to that they didn't have, you know, during David's time, right? During Moses's time. OK, so I want to break this into two steps. First, let's talk about the herald, the Holy Spirit. Turn to John 16, John 16. We're going to read verses 5 through 15. Now, it is only as of recently that some things in this scripture has stood out to me in a huge way. And I hope that I can convey how important this scripture is to understanding the, the Holy Spirit's role as herald in our lives. Starting in verse 5. It says, but now I am going away to the one who sent me and no one is asking where I'm going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you. In he will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the father is mine. This is why I said the spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. This is a huge scripture in terms of understanding the Holy Spirit and his role in our lives. If you've been a, a, a part of the uh, the sorry, the mission group that we're a part of, you heard some of this. And I, I pray that you reflect if, if if it has changed you in any way. Right. So you heard some of this, but I'm asking you to reflect. Has this penetrated the way that you've been living with the Holy Spirit? All right. So you don't you don't just check out. <laughs> um. It says, when the spirit of truth come, he will guide you into the truth. He will not speak on his own, but tell you what he has heard. So the Holy Spirit doesn't come and just tell you anything. The Holy Spirit isn't sitting around thinking, hmm, what's best for so and so right now? Let me go tell them. What the scripture says is he will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. Who is the me? Jesus. Our king. The Holy Spirit will tell you only what Jesus wants you to hear. So as kingdom members, as kingdom members who live underneath a king, there are still orders for us. Our King Jesus still has assignments for us. He wants to deliver the, that message through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is one of his heralds to say, hey, Jesus has this assignment for you. This is what you should be doing right now. 
And see, here's the thing that's big about this. Our lives are busy. We got a whole lot going on. Right now, you're probably thinking about a whole, a whole lot. It's hot out here, sweating, ants. What about the flying spiders, right? There's, you, you, there's a whole bunch you could be thinking about right now. And you leave here, I'm sure the thinking doesn't end. What am I gonna make for dinner? I gotta get the kids ready for this, right? Our lives can be so busy that we go from the one thing to the next thing to the next thing and a, a week pass, a month pass, two months pass. Three months pass, six months pass, and we're just kind of going. And we haven't really heard whether or not God has an assignment for us. Maybe stop going. Maybe don't go that way now. Go over here. A lot of us are thinking about what our lives should be like in this stage of our lives right now. Should I get this job? Should I go to school? What school should I go to? Should I pursue and get a spouse? Should I, should I buy a house? What about my car? Should I update the car? How should I raise these kids? Jesus is speaking to the Holy Spirit to tell you your answers. Jesus is giving the Holy Spirit your answers. So what then does that mean about our relationship with the Holy Spirit. How important is our relationship with the Holy Spirit? If you found yourself like me throughout the years questioning, man, what should I be doing right now? Should I be doing this? Am I doing this right? Have you, have you asked yourselves those questions before? It's natural. But you know who has the answer? You know who's who's still who's still giving you your answers? Jesus is not just on the throne mediating for us. Oh, he just pardon that one. He, he didn't know what he was thinking. Oh, yeah, she just, you know, just let's throw something on the altar. No, he's still giving orders. He's still giving assignments. He's still giving instructions for you. He's still giving instructions for you. How's your relationship with the Holy Spirit? Question. Do you have ears to hear what he is trying to say to you? Because trust, if you don't, you're going to keep wandering around asking us, what should I be doing right now? What should I be doing right now? What should I be doing right now? Frustrated, baffled, in darkness. God does not want to leave us in darkness. He does not want to leave us in darkness. He hasn't left us in here to just roam around. He has specific things he wants us to accomplish. You know, Paris preached this message that really uh, challenged me when he talked about creation comes from, what do you say? How do you say it? Uh, there's, a, there's a need and, from, and, and stuff are created to meet the needs, right? And so that's why things are created with a purpose, right? To meet a need and that God made us to meet needs. God made us to meet needs. There are things that need to happen on this side of eternity that he made you for. He said, I need to address this, Akash. This needs to get done, Andre. Hmm. There's this problem over there, Wendy. But I know we've grown up in a society where we choose everything we want. We choose our careers. I want to do this. It's going to make me so much money. I'm going to be financially sad. And we, we choose everything we want. And I think we think that's natural as disciples. But I want, I want to challenge you. What if the king had other plans? What if the king had other plans? What if your ambition is not the king's ambition? 
What if your desires is not the king's desires? There's nothing wrong with making money. There's nothing wrong having healthy careers. What I'm talking about is alignment. Are you aligned with God's will? Are you aligned with God's will? Or are you uh, just working, just moving, just doing, and you continue to just do and do and do? And the Holy Spirit is trying to speak to you, but he can't even get a word in because you got all you need right here. You know, you know what you're doing. You've been doing this for a while. You actually people actually call you an expert in your field and in your life. People look up to you. So you know what you're doing. Why? Why? Why do you need to stop? Why do you need to evaluate? Why do you even even need to consider that what you're doing is probably not what God wants you to be doing? Because look how successful it's been. That's the that's that's the promise. If it's successful, that's how you know God's blessed this. God's blessed. Is, is that right? Is that right? Are, are there successful, wicked people? Yes, absolutely. Hmm. Hmm. But sometimes we do that. Oh, if, if it works out, if it works out, that means God bless it. Read your Bible. That's not true. Look around you. That's not true. Does the Holy Spirit have a voice in your life? Have you created a space for him to speak? We need that for our direction. For our direction. For your personal life. The Holy Spirit has directions for you. From Jesus. He don't, the Holy Spirit don't, I mean, to, I don't know about you. <laughs> this excites me so much. It really does. I never really thought that I would have that kind of relationship with Jesus. I didn't. When I thought, initially, when I thought about the Holy Spirit, he's just doing his own thing. He's going to move me in his own ways. He's taking orders. He's taking orders. From Jesus. From Jesus. Like that's incredible to me. That when I'm when I'm doing what the spirit is prompting me to do, that's me following Jesus's orders. That's me following Jesus's orders. Just like I was Peter or James or John or Philip. For me, that that is incredible to think about. That makes knowing God's will special to me. Because it's not me just like, I don't know what's going to happen. I'll do whatever I need to do. I'll figure it out. That's Jesus directing my steps. That's 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 unbelievable. But we can only be directed if our relationship with the Holy, if we're sensitive to the Holy Spirit's voice. If we're sensitive to the Holy Spirit's voice. You know, I want to share a story I asked. Um, uh, Andre, if I could share it. Thank you, Dre. Uh, I want to share a real life experience that I had that I feel like marries what the Holy Spirit does as a herald and what people do as heralds. So we were living in Lawrenceville. Lawrenceville? Lawrence. It, is, it is Lawrenceville, right? OK, because in the Bronx, I lived at St. Lawrence and I'd be mixing those up. Um, so we lived in Lawrenceville and we we're living in an apartment complex and they started raising the rent. And I was like, yo, this rent is too much right now. We, uh, maybe we need to think about getting a house. Let's, let's like think about it. And uh, my lovely wife was like, I don't know. Let's, I don't know yet. Maybe we need to. I'm like, let's just, let's just look into it. And so we started looking into it. 
And as we started looking into it, I'm like, I don't think we should be looking into it anymore. I think we need to do this. And she's like, well, it's going to, you know, she's, she's, you know, I'm, we balance each other very well because I'm the one who don't really know all the details, but know where to go. <laughs> And, and she'll be like, but actually, let's think through these different things. And it helps us to, like, navigate and for me to not leave my kids and stuff behind because <laughs> I'll just be like, we need to do this. She's like, well, pack a bag for the kids. I'm like, you know what? Um, <laughs> so in no way am I saying, like, she was being unfaithful. I, I, I believe we were doing our one, two step. Um, so I'm like, I think we need to really be serious about this. And so I, I start calling Pedro and I start calling Andre and I'm like, yo, so how do you get a house to tell me everything? I need to know everything. And what I don't understand, I'm like, Lynette, I ain't understand this. What did he say when he said this? And then she's like, I don't know. I think I said, actually, you need to just speak to Pedro. Pedro, doo -doo 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 -doo, talk, to, talk to Lynette. So then we're going through this process and I see a house and I feel the spirit say, go. I don't, I've never experienced this before because I've never looked for a house before or uh, even in the Bronx looking for an apartment. I just, I don't know if I've ever had that, that, I don't know, sense of like this right now. I've seen things. I'm like, it'll be nice to live here. I've had that, but never like this. Right. And so I see this apartment. I'm like, this is it. I felt, I felt a prompt. I felt like something inside of me say like, you need to go now. And so I told Lynette, I said, I know this ain't gonna make sense, but God told me this is our house. We need to go now. And I, 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 know, this, I know this is like really scary for you because I don't have all the details, but I need you to trust me. And she was like, okay, I'll trust you. And so we started going. We went and looked at this house. Andre showed us this house and we walked in this house and we looked up and down this house. And I was like, I think I was wrong. I think I was wrong. <laughs> This this is not the house. It has holes in the walls. Things aren't built. I'm like, this is not safe for the kids. There's no way this could be our house. Maybe I misunderstood something. Be patient with me that I'm trying to figure this out. I'm just, I know God told me to go. I just don't think he told me to go here. And so she's like, okay, okay. So then we start looking at other houses. And we found a house that fit our budget. And we're like, this is the house. We're going for it. We're going to put... We're going to put a down payment or what do, you, what do you call that? Put in a bid, right? Put in a bid for it. And Pedro came, looked at me, looked, uh, showed me it around and things of that nature. He's like, it's a good house. Da -da 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 -da. I'm like, all right. Amen. So, so I think it's Sunday. I think it's Sunday. Leaving church. They have another open house. We want I want to go take one more look at this beautiful place before we put in our bid. So we're going there. And Lynette's like, ah. she calls me while we're in the car. And she says, hey, babe, I really don't feel good moving forward with putting a, a, a bid on this house until we see this other house that uh, was on the market that like we haven't been able to see. And I was just like, sure, no problem. It was, it was, I don't know why you're so into this house. We ain't seen nothing. They have the pictures were like super old looking. So it was like, Mwah. but sure, I'll go take a look at it. We go take a look at this house. And we're looking it up and down. I'm like, oh, it's a nice house. So, Pedro, what do you think? This, this house, this house is nice, man. It, you could do a lot more with this house. It's bigger. The, the, he gave me all the stuff that I can't remember and I don't store in my brain <laughs> about, about houses and why this was a good choice. I'm like, okay. So then we start talking to the guy selling it. And... He's ready to give this house away. Like right now, like, sure, let's go. So then call up Andre. Yo, Andre, can you, you know, can you take care of this? Sure, sure. We go on vacation. I, I, th I think we put in an offer. I don't know. I don't know if y'all remember. We put in an order for like Tuesday. We go on vacation. They accepted the order like Saturday, the offer Saturday, right? Which is, I didn't know, I don't, you know, again, this is my first time looking for a house. I don't know what's a, what's, what's a miracle or not. I'm just like, you get a house, you don't get a house. <laughs> it is what it is. But they, Andre is like, bro, this is incredible. This does not happen. Nobody just accepts the first offer. Oh, wow. 
Nope. Nobody does that. And they gave, a, gave us some money. We asked them to take like $10,000 off and they was like, sure. And so we like, okay, thank you. Thank you. Praise God. Praise God. But see, here's the thing about that scenario that, that I think really helped me to understand how the Holy Spirit works. So one, there was, I had a strong desire to do something. Strong desires don't mean nothing, right? Like you got a strong desire to eat pizza. <laughs> I had a strong like urge to pursue something, right? And it wasn't a bad thing, it was a good thing. So in my head, it's like it's in you know, a certain category or certain boundaries, right? It's not sin, right? But as I'm pursuing this thing, people keep confirming that like, yeah, this, this is a, a good thing, right? It's not just me anymore. It's not just me anymore, right? Because if it was just me, we wouldn't, <laughs> we wouldn't be living in that house. Well, maybe I had some smarts, but like my initial thing was, oh, I felt that urge, that prompt when I saw this house. And so this is God telling me this is the house. But then I listened to my Holy Spirit filled wife who was like, I really don't feel good moving forward until we at least just look at this place. And I, I allowed her strong desire to change my direction. And I, OK, let's I'll take this into consideration. Let me go this way and try and try this out. And then I asked advice. Hey, Andre, Pedro, what do y'all think about these two houses? Give me your wisdom from being house seller people, right? And then I'm like, yeah, this house right here. This house right here. And then we keep going and the guy's like, yeah, I'm ready to give it away. I'll take off 10,000. I'll accept the first offer. You know, there was a time in my life that I thought following the Holy Spirit meant being like just rebellious, right? Like there's what everybody's doing and the Holy Spirit tells me to do something opposite. Go do that opposite. Every time I am in my head, I'm Elijah. Every time, every time. There's, there's, a, there's the 400 prophets of people who don't know what they're doing and then there's me. You know what I mean? The, the, the man who hears the voice of God, right? And, until, you know, God tells you like, no, I had other prophets too. It wasn't just you, right? Um, but in that moment, it's just me. I'm, I know. Everybody else don't know, but I know. And what I feel like I've learned over the years is that it's an interconnected thing. It's an interconnected thing. God, if, if God is leading you somewhere and wants you to do something, somebody will confirm it. Somebody will confirm it. Some spirit filled person will confirm it in your life. They will. And sometimes it's not necessarily a great thing. Sometimes it's like, you need to, you've been hearing, you need to leave this job, but you make really good money at this job. You're like, it don't make no sense to leave this job. And somebody comes and says, maybe you should leave that job. Maybe that's not the best job for your family. You're not, you're not actually able to raise your kids because of this job. You don't like the message. It seems contradictory to all logic, but somebody confirms it. Somebody confirms it. This is why I want to ask you, who's speaking in your life? Who has a place of let's, I'm, I'm going to give a strong word here, authority. Who has a place of authority? to speak into your life, that you will stop what you're doing to consider. If you're married, 
who outside your marriage has authority to speak into your marriage and you will stop and listen? Who has that authority? Who has you given it to? Who have you given it to? Who have you said, sis, you need to come at my throat? You, you come at my throat. Bro, you need to come at my throat? You can come at my throat. And not only you can do this, I'm going to make myself available for you to do it. See, the two heralds that our King Jesus is u- uses right now is each other and the Holy Spirit. And where does the Holy Spirit reside? Right? Right? So yeah, this, 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 the Spirit's going to speak to you and tell you what to do. But trust the Spirit will confirm it in another Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit filled person. Do we have lives? Do we have lives? that allow God to speak into our lives through these two entities. I want you to just take a moment, think about your life, think about your week, think about maybe your month. You've been through some things, you felt some things, you failed in some things. There's a whole lot of stuff that's been going on in your life. Have, do you have a place in the space and time for the Holy Spirit to speak? And do you have a place in space and time for people to speak into your life? When does that happen? Do you prioritize it? Or is it a last minute thing? Is it when all is going to, you know, it's like, ah, oh, Let me call that sister that I know I love and can say some things. Oh, let me call the brothers and talk to them because, you know, it's really going down right now. I know I'm guilty of that. I know I am guilty of that. I've done it too many times and I'm ashamed of it. I've done it too many times. Where God, the Holy Spirit was telling me, you need to call somebody. 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 And I keep like, nah, but I got this. Maturity is you learn how to deal with your own stuff. So I'm learning how to deal with my own stuff. I ain't calling nobody. I got this. So long as I ain't punching nobody or punching a wall or going out and doing nothing crazy. I got this. That's what goes on in my head. Holy Spirit speaking, I'm telling you, you wrong. Come on, man. I got this wrong. I don't need to be talking to nobody. I just need stronger, quiet times. I need to pray. I need to fast. All those things are great. They are. I need to pray. I need to fast. But guess what? You can pray and fast and still not listen to the Holy Spirit. You could pray and fast and still not listen. You could pray and fast and he say, go talk to somebody. You're like, nah, I'm just going to pray and fast some more. This, you know, Jesus said only some things come out by praying and fasting. So I'm going to just pray and fast some more. And the Holy Spirit's like, you, di- you did that. I'm giving you your answer. Get up, go talk to somebody. Get up and go do this. Here's their answer. Here's your answer. Here's your answer. Why aren't you moving? Why you keep doing this? Where, I gave you an answer. I gave you your an answer. Here's your answer. Why are you still here? Why are you still here? Here's your answer. Go do what I'm telling you to do. Go do what I'm telling you to do. See, if we're going to allow King Jesus to reign, 
We have to let his heralds speak into our lives. We have to let his heralds speak into our lives. That's the way he designed it. That's the way it's been since he established his people. He had other people speaking his will into other people's lives. We have the Holy Spirit to speak his will into our lives. Are you sensitive? Are you sensitive? I want to conclude with this. Raise your hand if you've been hurt by someone. Raise your hand if you've been hurt multiple times by people. See, I believe what Satan wants to do is he, he wants to use that hurt to have us devalue the Holy Spirit in each other. I think Satan wants to use that hurt to have us devalue the Holy Spirit in each other. Because, you know, there was a Holy Spirit person who hurt me. So you can't trust every Holy Spirit person anyway. So I might as well be very careful. Extra I, my boundaries need to be so tight because anybody can hurt me. And I think sometimes we allow those hurts to harden our hearts. We allow those hurts to harden our hearts, to deafen our ears. And then there's no way God's word can get to you. There's no way. You've decided in your mind people can't be trusted or only people who do A, B, C, whatever, whatever is your rubric, because we all have one. Right. You created a rubric. If they fit into these boxes, they're trustworthy. I could talk to them. If they don't fit in these boxes, they're dangerous. Therefore, I shall trust them with nothing. Right. And that logic replays in your mind. And so when the Holy Spirit says, yeah, but like you, they might be dangerous now, but your relationship with them is going to help them to grow. Are you, are you, are you okay with that? No, no. No, I have my rubric. My rubric is if you look dangerous, you don't get a you don't get a place in a say. It don't matter about how our relationship will change you and you. I, 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 I've been through enough. No. And I really believe that those hurts are hindering our ability to hear God speak to us, that our king is sending messages directly for us, directly for you. And you can't hear it because you got your rubric, because you've been hurt and you set up boundaries. And, and I'm sure Jesus is like, I understand. I had a Judas. You still have no excuse. We have no excuse. And, I, and, and if, if we're being honest, I don't think we want an excuse. I think we want to hear Christ's voice in our lives. Yeah. But we have to be intentional, about, attention, intentional. intentional <laughs> about cultivating those relationships. Who's speaking? Who, what spirit filled person is speaking into our lives? How are we allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our lives? If we're not intentional, intentional about cultivating those relationships, we won't hear what King Jesus has to say to us. And, and, and hear me. You want to know what King Jesus has to say to you. Amen. Because it's not just about you. Yeah. It's about your spouse. It's about your kids. It's about your siblings. It's about your parents. It's about your neighbors. It's not just about you. The stuff he's going to say is going to change your community. It's going to change those around you. It's going to help those around you. So when you don't hear 
other people suffer too. When you don't listen, other people suffer too. This is essential for us. This is essential for us. This is essential for us. If you're not a Christian yet, and you're thinking about this walk, it's going to be those same two things. What kind of relationships do you have? What kind of friends do you have? Are they speaking God's will into your life? Are you cultivating a space that's allowing God to speak into your life? Because I'm sure if I asked all of us to raise our hand about how many horrible things we did because we just went on our own thinking and strength, we would have to raise all our limbs. <laughs> yep. Here's the beautiful thing. Here's the beautiful thing. Jesus is on his throne sending messages for you. Jesus is on his throne sending messages for you. He knows what you're going through. He knows what your challenges are. He knows how you feel. And he has words for you. Amen. He has messages for you. I want to encourage us to be intentional about cultivating our relationship with the Holy Spirit and spirit filled people, because that is how we're going to hear the Lord's voice. Amen. Thank you.